Welcome to Checkpoint Real Talk, a podcast for security folks who want less F-U-D and more F-U-N. In each episode, we'll have lighthearted conversations about security, people, processes, and technology as we react to how they're portrayed in film and TV. We'll bring in experts from inside and outside Checkpoint to break it down. What was accurate? What wasn't? And what can you apply to real-world cyber events? On this episode of Checkpoint Real Talk, we're joined by host Sia Yasu Tornrat, Product Marketing Manager Diana Polanski, and Global Head of Application Security Executive Les Faria, with a deeper look into the IT Crowd, Series 3, Episode 4, The Speech. What is it? This, Jen, is the internet. <laughs> what? That's right. This is the internet. <laughs> the whole internet. Yep. I asked for a loan of it so that you could use it in your speech. Oh, it's so small. That's one of the surprising things about it. Hang on. It doesn't have any wires or anything. It's wireless. Oh, yes, everything's wireless nowadays, isn't it? So I can really use it in my speech. What if someone needs it? Oh, no, no. People will still be able to go online and everything. It'll still work. Oh, good. Good. I tell you, you present this to the shareholders and you will get quite a response. Mm. Can I touch it? It's so light. Of course it is, Jen. The internet doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> no, of course it doesn't. <laughs> hey! What is Jen doing with the internet? Ma said I could use it for my speech. Are you insane? What if she drops it? I won't drop it. I'll look after it. No, 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 Jen. No, this, this needs to go straight back to Big Ben. <laughs> It goes on top of Big Ben. That's where you get the best reception. Well, I promise I won't let anything happen to it. No, Jen, I'm sorry. But the elders of the internet would never stand for it. Okay, guys. Wireless and Big Ben. Can we talk about this a little bit? Because I think that's actually a really important part that I don't think people realize uh, how wireless works. Like, Diana, Les, what are you you guys seeing on that? (sighs) I think those are two different do two different parts. Like, can we talk about the wireless and the Big Ben separately? Yes. Okay. You okay? So, so here's the deal. Actually, I wouldn't even go there. Uh, what I would say is the internet, and then we can digress into what you know, because the term wireless is like this wired, this wireless too. There has right. to be some form of. There could be some form of wired too. Right. If, if, well, if, what do you mean? You know, things are connected. Like, for example, you've got connectivity at home, right? At some somewhere, like whoever provides your connectivity at home connects a wire to the house or the apartment or whatever. And then you can have a concept of everything wireless, but it's just not. It's not true. Just. Everything's wireless. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. It could be through. Maybe you can do it through satellites and all that. Yeah, oh, okay. you're saying you're saying that she completely misunderstands the concept of wireless, and they're kind of playing playing a, a joke on her here, and she's trying to pretend that she understands what's going on, but she still doesn't get it. Yeah, and, and I think yeah, that term is a. We could probably use that thing about you know not knowing enough and awareness. Right at the end of that, after that speech, if only because uh, you know it's knowledge in the end, right? And awareness, and all of us are very different human beings, regardless of what we do in life. You know, we are exposed to certain things, and therefore, you know, you know that you have that experience. Each of us have our own experiences in our world. We don't need. It doesn't mean that everyone knows everything. That unless you God, I guess, but. <laughs> That, that concept of not knowing is very different because what you do, for example, or what Shia does, right? She's she she does things like you know all this audio visuals and and all that stuff. 
there's no way in hell I, I know enough about it. I even asked the concept of both of you using green and talking. It's, <laughs> it's those things, right? At the same time, there are some areas that I might be further exposed to. And then there's the whole other thing about behaviors and, you know, condescending and, you know, that stuff. It's, you know, the empathy part of life that, you know, eventually it comes back, right? It's it's knowing not, knowing things is one thing. Conveying it is another thing. And, you know, having a message that goes across is important because you might have all the knowledge in the world and not know how to communicate Oh, oh, you're right. I can empathize with that. I I remember last year when I was working with some developers, they were going on and on about doing something in a repository, and I didn't know what that word was. And they thought that I, they acted like I was dumb, but I wasn't. I just had never heard it before and didn't know what it was used for. Yeah. And actually, you're bringing up a point, right? The, the concept, and I, I'm sure... Again, I, it's the first time I'm sort of seeing the, this uh, these episodes, for example. But, you know, it comes back to knowledge. You have knowledge, and then you want to convey that. You know, you want to raise the awareness by conveying that knowledge. If you don't convey it well, it can be misunderstood, or you might understand it differently, for example, and explain it in a, in a different way. I have... I feel strongly about a lot of things because even the concept of internet and, you know, I, I just think internet is something, it's a concept of connectivity. All of us are connected. Right. And we mm-hmm. start using things for for what they are and, you know, and we make assumptions there because initially it was only meant to be certain. Uh, you always build products or you build services to for specific functionality or or that's at least what's the intent regardless of you know how much money comes or, or whatever but then you know it can be used in a very different way people can exploit that in a very different way say oh we've got this connectivity so now what can we do you know and right about the wasn't it developed by the military yeah but it, yeah, right? yeah yeah but it's it's nothing to even don't even i would go even beyond that right it was meant to connect, right? And then when you start connecting, nobody actually thought, hey, you know what, we need to secure things and all that stuff. But then you started having, and I'm going even further back than this movie, this episode, if you will, where you have ATMs that people were reluctant to use because, hey, you know what, you're putting your card in, it's going to do something, and it's, well, what if I go in the middle, in between there and try to tap out all that information, right? And it was never thought to be that way. Everyone, you always make assumptions people will use it the way you build it for, and actually you might not. And I, right, I, it reminds me of a, of a meme I saw of children on a, play, a playground, and it says, and it was talking about UX, but it's kind of a similar concept. So you see all these slides but the children are actually sliding down the hill beside the slide. Mm. Yeah, and, and you see, so that that tells you about you know perceptions, your environments, and all that stuff. Because what is us here probably like in my case, I'm here in the U.S. Right, and our exposures here versus other cultural exposures and how they see things. Even now that you mentioned U.S. right. Things mean different things in colors and all that to different, you know, cultures as well, right? So it, it's those things I see. So for me, like the internet is just like any other technology. Mm-hmm. And that goes to, to what you, you were talking about earlier about Diana and Sia about your own products, for example, right? You build it for certain things, right. but it's going to be used something else. And I'll say that because... <clears throat> We go to artificial intelligence. It's not a new concept. If you, you want machines to do this repetitive work or stuff that you know, so that you can focus on the important stuff. But that whole concept, it can be meant for good, but you can also use it in another way and say, hey, now that I'm getting that information, how can I use that information for bad or what, whatever we, we, we consider the word bad to be, right? Yeah. yeah, it's 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 interesting. Like like you know, you're talking about the internet that was supposed to improve communication, or maybe I don't really remember how it was developed, but it's apparently it was supposed to improve communication, but also 
keep that communication private. And then it sort of beca- became kind of people realized that they could tap into into that and like do really malicious things as well as also use it for entertainment and even porn. Like it's like the military, whoever created it is probably just like rolling in his grave right now. Like, what did I do? I do think though, do you guys feel like there is still uh, from a population of on earth perspective, better education around what the internet is or are we still in that you know ignorance is bliss phase it's actually more than internet that's what i i think of it right at least speaking for myself it's it's technology there's no i really the the if you start talking about technology in terms of silos like you know security risk and all the other stuff mm-hmm. we missed the bigger picture that in general, society will be will evolve and have. So, in other words, uh, say Diana or you see her, right? For example, it's it's not important that hey, you know, someone's a, a security person and another person's an IT person, and another person's just a lay person. Eventually, all of us have to be aware of what can or cannot be done. And and sometimes, if you might be aware of certain things, and I might be. Uh, for example, an IT person, for example, and may not be aware of that area that you've been exposed to. Uh, and what I think that that those lines are blurred, and eventually, I think I, I see these both IT security and all of that being, you know, under one kind of umbrella. We've broken it down, but really, it's one kind of thing. Uh, and right, are, I feel like that. That's why that, you know. A lot, a lot of times now you you kind of expect people to know technology and know the possible problems that can ha- that can happen with the technology they use every day. Like you and I, we go through all these security trainings as soon as we start a new job and they like take over our phone and they put all these controls on it because they know that we're going to hook up to the work computer and work information might go to our phone but not every not everybody knows that that that's an issue if it's if you don't work for a cybersecurity company they don't know that just connecting all of your d- d- devices just opens you up to all kinds of problems so then you get mass hysteria on the internet saying saying oh this place was hacked this place was hacked this person got this person got fished because yeah. they thought they thought it was their grandmother but it was not their grandmother that happens to me all the time the every old woman i know has gotten has has gotten fished and i've gotten these weird facebook requests that that are saying things to me that sound weird that i wouldn't think that an old lady would send me so because oh. I think that they get targeted because people assume that a young person probably understands technology enough to know when their Facebook is hacked, but an old lady won't know. Yeah, you know, and I wouldn't be actually even categorize it that, but that's an opinion I'm sharing. Because mm-hmm. I say, no, it all depends on your exposure because once, you know, we learn the most when we make mistakes. So the people who've been hit earlier will be now much more aware of they should or should not do. That gets into an aspect of behaviors and and, uh, social engineering itself. It's the human mind. It's nothing to do with technology. It's just convincing you in such a way and going into behavior psychologically to make you you think one way or the other. So it, so it might be that the older people that that this happens to them because they they're just not aware. They didn't grow up they didn't grow up with this and it's not even so much that they're less aware of how the technology works is they're just they're less aware that someone would do that to them or exposed because as humans right i think in general mm-hmm. you you do you have trust and if somebody talks to you in a nice way and all that you just feel better right it's it's working on all those psychological things right and that's how this whole concept of social engineering and all that stuff and now when you mix it up with knowledge for example right and again, I'm digressing probably, but when you talk about, when we say artificial intelligence, but I want to sort this concept because it, it sounds big, but it's not big really. It is collecting of data, you know, the algorithms are like very few anyway. They, they have certain methods of doing things, but it's a combination of getting that, all that data you can possibly get on say, perhaps Diana or, or Shia, for example, 
correlating that and curating it, the important stuff, right? It used to be just classifying, but now it's gone even further of getting the most important that stuff and combining that with senses and so on and so forth. I can convince you, your friend, your, your, your family that, hey, this is Diana. No, I'm saying I can, I'm, I'm saying in general. You can use technology to convince almost like a human because I, I know so much about one of you, for example, that you would likely think, oh, you know, this is that person. But you know, to, to explain about how, you know, it is believable, right? Uh, I would say that, you know, you say nothing happened, you don't know that nothing happened. Because of the techniques that are used to, to, to attack, for example, like for example, breaches, and I'm saying this because we talk about all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They're discovered sometimes 200, nearly a year after. What is the, the techniques that you, you hang in there, be dormant, and eventually you come back and, you know, and, and try it, because otherwise if you start, as soon as they discover something about your friend, for example, Diana, I could go into it and then you'd be like, hey, this looks, you know, fishy, like, well, what are you doing? You know, I'd wait and just listen, you know, gather more information and all that stuff, and then send in another cue, you know, and eventually, when I got enough, then I'll just go and attack. And that's the way most breaches also happen. Even the things that we hear about in the news, it's only a small, it's like an iceberg, right? right. You only hear the top thing. You don't, you don't know what's underneath. Where 90% of that stuff is already exposed. You know, companies are paying, you know, and all that stuff, even though, say, the policy isn't, for example. You know, so that's why they're, it's risk averse. Being risk averse is one thing. And the other thing is, the uh, the reputation is a big thing, right? If you say, oh, you know, if you talk company-wise, so they try to block in general. So no, makes, so uh, that makes absolute, absolute sense. Of course it is, Jen. The internet doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course it doesn't. <laughs> hey, what is Jen doing with the internet? <laughs> use it for my speech. Are you insane? What if she drops it? I won't drop it. I'll look after it. No, 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 Jen. No, this, this needs to go straight back to Big Ben. Big Ben? Yeah, it goes on top of Big Ben. That's where you get the best reception. Well, I promise I won't let anything happen to it. No, Jen, I'm sorry. But the elders of the internet would never stand for it. No, no, Roy, I spoke to the elders of the internet not one elders hour ago. Of the internet. I told them about Jen winning Employee of the Month, and they were so impressed that they wanted to do whatever they could to help. Wait a minute. The elders of the internet. The elders of the internet know who I am? You've got to let me have it! <laughs> no, Jen, I'm sorry. It's just too risky. Oh, please, Roy. Uh, you want to talk about the elders of the internet? I think we need to do the elders of the internet. Okay. Yeah. You guys, if we were to look at elders of the internet, what would they be like in real life? <laughs> no, I have a different concept. It, I, the way I'm looking at this, they're probably, you know, they're trying to, you know, convince her and, you know, by name dropping. You know, so that, you know, everyone wants to be associated with the, the big names, for example, right? And so that concept of, oh, elders and somebody, oh, somebody is important, if you will, and associated with this technology that you're trying to do. And that's our society itself, right? Oh, I know so-and-so, and so, you know, mm. and, and, and life. And, and I, I think they're trying to play on her, her mind and, you know, hey, you know, so-and-so. That's, oh, and even if it could be real, well, who cares? It's name dropping to convince her that it's, you know, something, some important folks that are involved here. And, you know, so it means a lot. So that it's a, it's a psychological thing in behavior or, or on convincing her psychologically. Oh, that also, absolutely is going, going on. <laughs> but, but, it, but it also reminds me of what you were saying but when we spoke earlier about this this concept of of governments and and someone governing the internet 
Yeah. I, and that's I mean, true. Sorry. Yeah, no, on. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it is. But, you know, the, the, the concept of even governance and governing the government to the left, right? That's usually their regulations after the fact. Uh, also, I have that opinion too, right? When new mm -hmm. technology comes up, uh, you know, until you realize that there's something that's going to be potentially something, oh, let's put uh, regulations in place and, you know, and so on and cover it, if you look at it from that perspective. But who is this, you know, governance area? It depends on which area you are in. Like, for example, does is it uh, across nations? You know, each each place has its own rules and what they can. You can use it for, you know, you have some states that, in fact, maybe all states do it in some way, shape, or form, you know. Right. Like, I start thinking about the difference between, say, GDPR and CCPA. Yeah. Like, like, what privacy laws that you have in California, they're directly related to what's going on in Europe. And now every single time I go on a website, I have all these annoying pop-ups and checkboxes I have to have to do. And I know I'm part of the problem because I create these websites and I have to do it. Yeah, but there's also the other thing, right? It's beyond that. It could be governments uh, monitoring you for everything. Oh, mm. I didn't uh, think about that. Yeah, but, but that's being done, right? Today, we say, when we talk about all this privacy stuff, that is for at least legally and making that assumption that everyone would follow those rules, right? Right. But in reality, if you didn't want to follow any rules, you could get that information anyway. Right. Like we right. About and I, I guess I, I'm I thinking get... about it. Uh, I'm thinking about it a little bit at face value. Like I have to put this on these uh, websites and deal with it on websites. And I'm not even thinking about that. My credit cards might be on the websites. And then if mine are, and I don't even, uh, and it's not that big of a deal. If it, you know, it's easy for me to block my credit cards or whatever. But what what if these? What if I used a work computer and went on the internet and all the work data? That that would be a big deal. Yeah, but let me see. At least you, you might have better controls there because these uh, the workplaces tend to have better controls for for the work they do. But that doesn't mean that information is not available. No. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, and that's why the concept of privacy, as we understand it from you know the word privacy, it depends on how you're looking at it. If you're looking at it purely from regulation perspective and you're breaking it and therefore it costs money and all that stuff that's one thing but if you look at it from another perspective hey do i if i need to know something about a person i just have to look at all these other data sources or use you know the same artificial intelligence toolings and all that that's available of data sources and get that information regardless and you'll get it but i, I what i'm relating to you is the concept of privacy is a big word that means different things depending on the context. I hope I, I'm clear. Oh, that. absolutely. Like you're not talking about just personal identifying information and web traffic. You're, you're talking about real surveillance, like every single thing someone, yeah, and, and someone the, does. The, yeah, and the fact that, like, yeah, you've crossed the road. You, there are cameras, you, you get everything. You've got your your watches and you know your stuff. You can be tracked, and and you and that tracking happens unbelievable. I can tell you this. Like for example, you might have something like a Fitbit or or something or Garmin, you know, whatever thing that you have. That's tracking you. That's how yeah. it knows how many steps you've done. So what? Think about it this way. You know, Diana. Let's say you are in uh, in a place. Let's go. Let, any place, let's say any, I don't want to name countries, then it becomes a, another whole thing. But like you're in a place, I can track you, where you, have you been? And there are there are tools available for free to to track that this person. So do you think there. it's unsafe to wear to wear um a Fitbit? No, I'm just saying, <laughs> I can say uh, look, we can go at face value and say that. I'm just saying that that concept of being private or it, it's it's a myth 
It is. So, so because once you put things out, you can't take it out. We got it. Oh right. So I, no matter I, what controls we put up, put over, you're you're yeah. you're only pulling. You're only allowing people still only a little bit of privacy. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, and but remember, because I can take you like today, what a deep fake and all that stuff that's happening, right? I can take your face and put it on someone else and say, hey, and it looks so real. Right. Huh. Put me uh, on Yeah, I know. So I'm just giving you these sort of examples of, of things. I know we digress here, but the concept of, of that governance is good. It's good because you need to have guidelines and controls and someone to oversee. Yep. But m- many a time they are more reactionary because they say, oh, this was built for that. And now it's being used this way. So let's put regulation. Now, at least our citizens or our, if they break this or somebody working with us, they have to follow those standards. And therefore, mm. we either find them. But again, even that is another, become a, a, in the legal perspective, it become another headache because usually, depending on who that person is, like, you know, the attorney general or whoever that is, right, might make an example of some company. So to say, so and the same thing being done by someone else might not because only this company is bigger or or has is known much further. You you have them, and then that that person who who like you know put them. I um, I use the word attorney general. It could be someone else. Gets you know can get elected because they want to make a name for themselves. So this whole, right. I mean, you, I'll just say this. Like in time. what case would they be, in what sort of situation would they tr- be trying to, like, basically, I don't know, tar and feather someone? It's, 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 I don't understand it last. Oh, okay. I'm saying in what, um, if if they want to use someone as an as a negative example, don't do this, what would a scenario like that be? No, it's like, say, say you've broken the law, you won't mention privacy, right? Whether it's GDPR or something, uh, or CCPA, or you know, this is here in California, here in, in the US, the privacy things, right? You can get people being fined big time. But it's usually, there are many who've done it, but the one, one or two, maybe the first ones would be the big example. Just like in anything, you get arrested and you want to make a case that no one else should do something, and therefore that the first few people become the example. And if you're a bigger person, it, it's more named for the person who's arresting you. And therefore, their image gets elevated as well. The person who's arresting you, so now when somebody says, oh, so-and-so arrested this big thing, oh, they know him, him or her, whoever that person is. You know, they know that person already, and therefore their name exposure goes up. You know, It's, it's like I said, name dropping in the psychology of how things work. Which I think is perfect. I think it's perfect that you tie that back to, again, Jen saying, oh my God, elders of the internet know who I am. Man alive. Everything you guys just kind of like went through just like in my head was uh, a couple things here is uh, humans don't like to follow rules because I have a, 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 a perspective that we are inherently lazy because we want to do the open shortest path first and get to whatever you know thing that we're going towards and so if we don't have governance of some capacity it's just anarchy at that point because if there's a will there's always a way to do it someone's going to want to do it differently you remind me of if you've been to asia during traffic rush hour sometimes those got lines on that street are just like recommendations (laughs) <laughs> and there's yeah. others that just start like driving down the sidewalk because they need to get somewhere. So, I mean, I feel like that's like visually, that's how I view the internet and just how we view access to data. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it yeah. is. And they're like humans, it's not just that they don't like to follow rules. They're careless. And mo- mo- most like hacks, I mean, like 90% of them, or less can probably correct me, are due to human error. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. The, the human, I don't care. I actually just said this in an earlier conversation. Technology is, I think, in a way to be a tool of convenience for us as humans. Like we were talking about AI, right? Everyone's so fearful of AI. There's pros and cons to it. But at its root, at its core is automation. It is to take away the mundane repetitive tasks 
automate that. So like you say, Les, we can do more creative things. We can do and use our minds, you know, and get deeper into whatever task that needs to, you know, whatever problem we're solving. Um, but I do think we run the risk as humans, we're fallible. Technology is getting to that point where it doesn't matter how many security borders that you put up. Um, us humans, if we see an email from, you know, someone we know and trust that might have gotten hacked, we're going to click on it. Yeah, but yeah, but that, that has never, ever changed, right? If, if that's the way I see it. Whether we use other technology and more technology and so on and so forth. It's just that it's sifting, it's, you know, and I think people will evolve and the, the basic stuff will be eventually already, almost everyone and their cousin will know it and, you know, things like, like today, we use an ATM, we use this, we, it's just become natural. We right. use a credit card instead of cash and, you know, it's this basic, it never used to be that not so long ago, you know, and it becomes a natural thing, but yeah. I think that the people part of it is the most difficult part, right? Yeah, right. Technology. The more technology you have, I don't like some people are afraid that it takes away jobs, but it actually creates jobs. You need people to monitor this stuff. Oh, now, yes, actually, you're, you're right on key there, as well as you create, you create other types of jobs, right? Because now this kind of, you know, even if you say, oh, it's going to take away a job, then that repetitive mundane stuff now, you can focus on things that make you more happy as, as against repeating the same thing again and again. Oh my gosh. I think we can keep waxing poetic on this guys. I think it's, you know, just us being in this industry, right. We see, we see so much of just humanity, all our foibles. Right. And we're always having to second guess, right. Because there's where, where people can make money, there's going to be malicious intent, right. Because greed is is a huge driver, right? And whatever that whatever motivates greed, that's a different issue, and that's not our well, topic. Well, right, it's not but... just greed though, because like when when you, when you think about all the different ways that people can ha get hacked, and the motive the people and companies, the motivation it it can be like nation states, like big governments going after it. People can do it. People can hack a company because they're bored and they're smart, like le less like how many different, how, like, what is there, like five or six, ten, maybe even 10 different reasons why people hack? Uh, I don't want to say why people hack, but it, you know, hacking is just hacking. We can hack making food as well. But my point is, I think what's important is you're right. It's not just money, right? I think at least. It is. It could be power. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that you want power, and you want just to upend something else. You know. I mean, you look, take it to a whole another level. And mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that. Whole thing, but, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, hey, man, like the big scary, scary is nation state. That's that's the yeah. bigger one, right? Like, look. As long as you have an IP address, you are exposed and you have a potential of getting hacked in whatever, like my toaster now has an IP address, right? Like, uh, like, but there's that kind of uh, malicious activity. And then there's the truly, what I'm very afraid of is the nation state activities, which I think we could go on another topic at another no, time. Actually, but... I think all of them are equal in fact, right? Because I, in fact, because look, hey, just because you chose them, Based on that or or something else, I can find out more information about your house. But to me, to get to your place is just good enough, and I'll just get whatever I can. And you know, humans generally, generally, I'm not saying everyone does it that way, but I'm more concerned about the surrounding area. It's not like hey, this place is fighting against. Yes, people do think about it, but they're more concerned about their their own areas and space. Uh, you know, it doesn't affect you as much until you're affecting yourself or somebody really close to you is affected. And that's when you realize, hey, this is serious, you know? Yeah. I, I'm talking from a, uh, from, a, from a psychological thing. I'm not saying that, hey, I mean, all of us care about, you know, things being bad and justice and all that stuff. But the biggest one happens when it hits close to home. Does. Right. That's with anything. It's like when you when you see a clip in the media about war, if if it shows like a thousand a thousand people died, you might just kind of gloss over it. But when it shows a personal story of this 
one little girl who might have died in a war, then you pay attention. And even it's more crazy than that. If you knew that one little girl, yeah, was right. then it really hits so. Yes. You know, it, it's those little things. And also, again, because even if the thousands die, right? If it is, uh, it depends also the type of country, right? Sometimes value of life is also, I don't mean going totally out of whack here, but. What, what leader, what world leader? Was it Stalin when he said, yeah, numbers, uh, one person dies, it's a tragedy, a million people die, it's, it's a statistic? Who said that, guys? That's like crazy. Uh, I, 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 I forgot. I, I don't. Or I don't remember. But it's a but good you, one. <laughs> but it's such a valid point, and that's the same thing with security, cybersecurity in general, right? One person gets hacked. Oh well, you know, or that company. Oh well, uh, but until you realize, oh wait a minute, that company got hacked, and now everyone has your data and information. Yeah, might want to be a little bit more concerned about it. It's man, it's we're so connected in so many different ways, and yet. I don't know. I feel like uh, the elders of the internet here is we're really referring back to is, you know, we want our freedoms, we want our personal data, but we also need some kind of governance and, uh, you know, something to help us kind of protect us overall in a lot of different ways. I mean, I, I who'd have thought IT crowd would give us like this level of like deep, like deep. <laughs> well, well, that that's that's what satire <laughs> is. Is it's, it's making fun of serious issues. Yeah. You know, the, the folks that actually think they know everything are the ones that would probably fail at some point in time. <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually the folks that pretend they know everything actually know a little bit less. <laughs> but yeah. they're, try they're trying to cover it up. Right. Sure, yeah. Well, they don't so, know what they don't know. Right, right. right. Or yeah. they're embarrassed of what they don't know. Well, what I'm seeing here is, is something that, that's interesting to me in the security field is you you have several levels here. You have these business people, it seems, from what I'm looking at, watching this IT leader. So which I'm 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 kind of relating to like like maybe CISOs and security folks, and then the dev people, like the engineers behind the IT guys here, like the engineers behind everything. Okay. I, I... <laughs> I don't know that. I, yeah, maybe it is, but anything that is a buzz, right? The way I looked at this, uh, the whole internet speech and all that stuff, when everything's a big buzzword, yes. today it's this, tomorrow it's something else, right? Some yes. driving cars, this. It's always because people know very little, not enough about it until it becomes natural. Yes. Um, and, do all cybersecurity like CISOs or a lot like well, but, you? But um, it's, no, it's, it's it's got nothing. I don't know that it's only. I wouldn't even call this in in only security. I would say every technologist or any scientist, right? In general, there's levels of knowledge. Obviously, it, and like I said, I think we, we touched upon this earlier. It's your exposure to certain things, right? If you're exposed, and if you've been exposed to certain things. Or you made mistakes, you will have learned much more than the person who never made those mistakes. Because they think that person who never made mistakes will think everything's gung ho because they're doing things right. But until you've got a slight deflection on the way, then now you've, you've learned something that you might never forget. In fact, the best people who you know have been successful are the folks who made mistakes and missteps, you know, along the way to make them stronger richer people in general so. I, I yeah i do agree with that i also though is purpose right like if you are in a leadership position in technology your show your your focus shifts right like you still have to have the practitioners that will actually have to run and touch the equipment if you will and the software right all the applications and manage all that and then as you move up into the hierarchy of management it's less about the tasks and it's more about the overall purpose of those tasks. Is it solving a business problem? Is this something that's going to help a company more profitable? Is this something that's going to secure your clients or, or your internal like, company data, et cetera? I mean, I'd imagine less at this point, like, I'm not saying that you're not technical because heaven knows you got like a thousand like, <laughs> like certs. Okay. Uh, you're a rarity. But at some point, I think people of your caliber do move away. Oh, you have from being to, technical, right? You have right? to do. Yeah, you have to see whether it's fit for purpose, and that's where the messaging that Dan was speaking about, right, earlier as well. And you're right on money, right? 
is to convey that message in such a way that it's not just the technical part of it, thing, conveying it why you know it's good for the business or or for whatever the use case is, right? And if if you are not respectful of how you know of knowledge or or, or communicating that way, you 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 hash it up and you you might have the best thing in the world, but it'll never either sell or people won't embrace it as much. And I can right. So so I think that that that's what Sia was saying is like the different level of focus here is like. The people who build the technology are in love with their features. The people who are trying to market it are in love with the words around the features, but but they're missing the point of what security people people they're carried they're worried about the business it, what what this means to their business and to what they have to say to the to like the shareholders and the board the board that's the word I was looking for. Board, I would uh, actually, it's not, I, I would actually say leaders, right, beyond leaders? security, uh, beyond security, because it is, if you say security or anything else, it, you know, uh, security folks look, whatever, the leaders also look from a risk perspective, right, while uh, other technologists in general might look at the availability of something and ease of use as against, you know, if you, you should look at all, but you Security, you look in terms of what is the risk of using this or not using it, and the message to be as, as such. But from a business perspective, you still look in terms of business, how does it help? And then you read the benefits and you know the pros and cons. Getting, like, do you find when that. you do you find when you go to go to work that the business people are sometimes like this, that they're so in love with something shiny and the latest technology and they don't understand stand no, what but, it but, is, but they want it anyway? No, but yeah, that's always that's true for in life, right? But the, the truth is uh, the from a security perspective, you have to make a case for why. What right. is the risk and what's the risk appetite of using such? But that we have to do that individually as well, right? You say, oh, I'm using this. I'm driving a car. I'm going here. I can't drive, but I'm driving. So this is your risk. And you could meet in an accident. And now what's your risk appetite? You're okay with you know, meeting in an accident. Not only you, but, you know, hitting someone else, right? And so on. But that's, in general, that's the way how our whole world gets around. Yeah. No, you know, you just, you gave me a visual of like, imagine if like our task is we need to go to the grocery store to pick up groceries and you have the option of like walking there, riding a bike or a pretty new shiny Lamborghini. And it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes that Lamborghini will get you there. But if you don't know how to drive a Lamborghini, guess what? You're probably not going to make it to the store. Yeah. You will conceptually it should take you there. Right. Um, no, you just you kind of made me giggle on that because, you know, from an IT in general or security, whatever have you, is this assumption being that technology will always be the best thing and that it doesn't, like if it doesn't go well, does it result in anarchy? So, you know, with this video here that with her speech, you know, and she's appealing to these non-educated people, a very real fear of like, what if the internet does go down and everyone just like freaks out? Didn't we all yes. think that was going to happen with Y2K? Yeah, that's exactly true. And but by the way, I, I wouldn't even use the term uneducated. It's unaware, right? Unaware. Look at you yeah. being so nice. You you are an yeah. executive, aren't you? No, yeah. no, no, no. No, it's true because on any, what is education anyway? It's not just you get a piece of paper and you got it's like you know, how aware are you or not, right? Yeah. You, you know, of, of things in life or in general. Or how how well how much do you buy into the hysteria? I mean, yeah. I remember Y two K when everyone thought everything was going to be set yeah. over. There were people stockpiling in in their homes the the food, just like we were about to have an earthquake because they really thought everything was going to be shut down, like grocery stores and like. Their their offices. They thought they wouldn't be able to go to work. I, I went and I was out. I was out there with a video camera, just recording all of this hysteria. That they think, okay, well, if it does happen, I was kind of agnostic. Like you know how people are like, I kind of believe it, but I kind of don't. <laughs> but let's just capture this and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, and that's yeah. Y two K was a good example of yeah, of what happened. Right, and there's there's going to be many more. It's it's always. Yeah. Now we've come to that cusp, but 
you know, electric cars and, you know, that do so many things and, you know, each one's, you know, one up in the other, you know, and, and, and other technology as well. I'm just saying in, in examples of, but you use all that information to do other things, but then these things can be misused as well. So in so many ways. So yeah. what would happen if we didn't have that anymore? If all this technology just went away, what would happen? Huh. So, <laughs> that's a big word. But like what I would say is, right, generally you have backups, right? So for example, oh. today, we're so used to using GPS and going from one place to another. There was a time and we knew how uh, we use maps. But if you knew how roads are built in general, you'll have an idea there's north, south, even the real north is not, you know, it's slightly to the left of where, if you right. go by magnetic south, but let's say, but I, I don't know if how many of you are aware in general, and that's true in the air as well. You know, in general, uh, odd numbers are north, south, and even numbers are east, west, when you go on a highway. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I have noticed that. That's funny that you should mention that, at least in the U.S. Yeah. Does it? No, is but, it cool? uh, but even yeah, in France, I don't know. I get there, lost uh, all the time. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no, no, but then uh, to, it's not an exact science, right? Because uh, the, like, say if you take a number 95, right? It goes north, south, but then you say, oh, there's a 495. It's sort of going, if you think of it almost like a tributary of, of things. And similarly, like the roads in, in Europe, a lot of them were the Roman roads, for example, right. that are built over. And, and, and these things were actually built for the military, just so you know. Hmm. So that well, was, roads were built for the military or the number yeah, of uh, Yeah, roads too. Right? But uh, we could get into a whole, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, because this is something I, I really love about cultures and, and how things work and all that stuff and how armies were bit, oh god we they, they just said they, they digress too much so. i was gonna say did we just take you down a rabbit hole in your mind right there did you just yeah flash? because <laughs> like if you if you really look at it and i'm uh, you don't have to put this in the uh, no i mean i like it i want to i like it keep going, man. yeah no. if you look at it, right these uh, these roads for example in, and back in the day when we didn't have all these you know flying stuff you know planes and all that stuff in some areas, in, in cities, if you see, they were built very narrow, and there's a reason for that, because however big your army was, they couldn't fit in at the same time, side by side, you know, juxtaposed. So what could happen is, even if you had a smaller army, you could still fight those two or three people that can fit in that, that gap, and you could win. And, and if you see some of these older uh, cities and all that stuff in Europe and all that, you you find these houses that were narrow streets, right? Right. Where, where even the women and and we, I'm saying women, and it doesn't mean every everyone fought, but generally it was the men could throw hot water, for example, on, yeah. on soldiers that they came down and all. So these are you know we evolve in life and and stuff like that. But I I know we digress in this whole concept of you know what if we didn't have the technology? I'm just saying that hey. People adapt and they, they do things in different ways. Because it's they're innovating, right? What is yeah. that? Uh, you know, necessity is the the food uh, yeah. for innovation or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> Mother. It, it gets also very interesting because will we survive? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that because we have become so dependent as well, right? Right. So you know, it used to be now it's Google, right? We Google something. What, you know, before we did, you just had to read things and you just read things and you wrote notes and all that stuff. And now it's going to go even further with all this other artificial right. Intelligence. And it's also kind of like getting into this, so like this concept of geek, because like in, in the in the past, like when knowledge wasn't readily accessible, you had to chase it. So then the people who knew a lot of things, you knew that they weren't outside playing, they weren't hanging out with their friends, they were sitting either in a dark room by themselves, or they were at the or they were at the library. So but well, now they can anyone can find any the answer to anything all the time. So like if you see a kid today, they seem like they know everything. No, but but you see, but this concept goes down from the old days, from ancient times. The scribes were the big guns. 
because mm -hmm. they were the people who read and wrote things, right? Yeah. And it goes down now here because even then we, we say, like we when we assume, right? This knowledge we'll get we are getting into now this whole chat GPT and God and whatever, right? The concept is that you're dependent on all that data that's being curated and 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 uh, in other senses there, it could be wrong. And what if the, the premise of the whole thing is wrong? You're getting information. Even things like writing. Writing is an art. Some of us write and some of us don't, right? And, and it comes somewhere better, others don't. And we spoke about some communications. Machines can do a lot of the good things because they can correct things, right? So, But yeah, at the same time, you're getting information, which is now you're starting at a different level. So there'll be an argument, hey, if you had to write an, a, a paper, for example, at university, right? It used to be that you started from scratch and you reached that rudimentary level because you're not a, a, a doctor as yet, right? You reach that level. But now the computers can reach, take you to a whole other level and you improve upon that as against saying, oh, now it's become easier. You know, right. Well, now, like you mentioned, chat GBT, you can even write a draft of your article and now now teachers have to use a different ai tool to see if chat gpt wrote your article or no or... It, I, I wouldn't even attack it that way i would mm -hmm. uh, no i think there are that no, these are all opinions then right the question right. comes hey you can't stop that you can die but the question yeah. comes okay somebody's used that then so what now now that you've gathered so much right tell me what what was what more can you add to this? Maybe that's the the path. To oh, go. right. So now, so now, okay, you can't stop them from using it, but so you need to it, test their knowledge to see if they used it to actually learn something. Since this is yeah, for so, a course, because the, the the level has gone to a different level now, right? It used mm. to be you were coming only to to that level five, for example, but now that whole level five is written by the uh, by artificial intelligence. So now, how can you get to level seven? Tell me about. It. After you've got this, what can you tell me more about, you know, that could be the test. Mm, okay, you're making me think, it. Les, you're making me think more because I poo-poo chat GPT because I actually argued with someone else the other day was the one, you know, thing that makes us humans is our ability to have the extraordinarily complex conversations that has emotions and a lot of nuances and subtleties. And so for me to hear and see what chat GPT is capable of, I'm kind of like, why would you want to take away language? Like, that's the one thing that really helps us develop and form deep, complex relationships, articulate our emotions, et cetera. Uh, I, I don't know why we'd want to automate that and, and have no. a, a machine do it for us, right? But you're helping me see it a little bit differently. Yeah. I, I hate I, it, I, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, because you have to adapt and there's nothing you can do about new things that come out because once it's out of the rabbit hole, it's just there. It's, it's You're right. Uh, it's, and, it's... You know, so now instead of fighting it, you use it and see what, because the, the bad guys are going to use the same thing anyway. So yeah. what the heck? you start using it and learn to live with it, you know, and, and so on. There's, there's, there's so much in this whole concept of thinking. Accountability, the complexity of us as human beings will never be replaced. So even, for example, you, you know, Diana or Sia, right, you've created this paper, you've done this, and you might use chat GPT to create this whole episode or whatever, and you're talking about just making this up, right? You'd, you'd say you use this, and then what? You can, but you know what? The, the, the thing is, is with all of those tools, is is it they they do the best they can. You really have to you really have to work hard if you're going to use an AI tool for creativity. They can do a good job to make something look like passable for so something that's kind of mediocre, okay. But once you want to get like emotion and you want to get a certain style, then you know you need yeah, human intervention. It, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, right? You need to mm -hmm. make it to the next level of showing. Things that you know how things happen and adapt to it, so that now you're differentiating. Because even if I said, "Hey, don't do this and you don't do that," and you used a, a, an AI to do help you to reach a certain level, if you publish it, you have that intelligence of publishing it, so you're accountable for it. That machine can't take that accountability. You can't say, "Oh, the machine did it, and therefore 
I believe it. That's yeah. right. So in the case of a business, you need to have someone checking that. But in the case of, say, a teacher and a student, it might be time for an oral test. I think that's oh, what we're going to shift it towards. And it's going to have to, I think. Right. I think yeah, you have to do an oral interview. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm not going to speculate on how, what they need to do. But if the question is, uh, all, all I'm saying is there's there be different ways of testing as well. Uh, which is taking that you've already uh, making the assumption you've already used whatever has to be used and and going from there. You no, know, no, I, I think uh, that we're going to go with like down another rabbit hole here. God, let, you know, I knew this last because I, you are such a polymath. Like, I feel like we can go down so many different rabbit holes with you. And who wants to listen to a boring old speech? <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if I could actually bring one of these wonders in to show you it? Say, oh, I don't know, um, the internet. I think it would. And I have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the internet. <laughs> oh, please, no flash photographer, you'll harm the internet. <laughs> oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen. Why is no one laughing? If anything were to happen to this box, the world as we know it would fall into chaos. Planes would drop from the sky like tables. Society would tear itself apart like an angry child with a napkin. Man's primeval instinct to survive at any cost would lead to terrible violence. So please, no flash photography. <laughs> And that's what the flashing light is for. Anyone? Is it heavy? Is it? <laughs> that's a bit of a silly question. The internet doesn't weigh anything. Fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I guess I should wrap it up. Aww. No, no. I, I really have to finish up. <laughs> guys. Oh my God! You really like me. You know, this really isn't that funny. I know. It's terrible. I thought at least we get a good story out of it, you know, something we'd remember. Y2K. Or blackouts. See, now they're getting the reaction they hoped for. Les, thank you so much for your time. This was such a thoughtful conversation. Who'd have thunk you guys? Uh, we would take a British sitcom and have some real deep, deep conversations. Oh, thank you for having me. It's all of you. Uh, actually, uh, we all share ideas. I don't know that I give any more or less than. All oh, you thinking. absolutely did. You like you're a really deep thinker. Thank you so much. Oh, we, thank you. We we need more deep thinkers in our world, my friend. We do. Right. We do. Um, and I just want to do one slight little thing here. I've just realized. I don't know if you guys see this, but there's an EL on my little makeup here. Just so I do see oh, okay. it. I do see it. Just, yeah. just, just a little shout out there. But anyway, I just thought I would share that. So yeah, I think yeah. this is a great uh, conversation. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us for Checkpoint Real Talk. That's a wrap on today's episode of Checkpoint Real Talk. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and some of those other buttons to show us your appreciation. And if you want to learn more or have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time for another episode of Checkpoint Real Talk.